Hello, welcome by a new Julia tutorial. Today I will talk about functions. Because there is too much to say about this in one lesson, I will make a second or maybe even a third video about this. In programming, functions are pieces of code that can be reused. In Julia, each function can have zero or more methods. For instance, uh, function f end is a uh, method with zero method. Uh, yes. So um, we can still, um, this, so this function has no method at all. We can still pass f around, for instance, uh, identity um, f. Uh, no, the identity uh, returns just the, uh, the object itself. And now uh, f is just passed around. But we cannot uh, call it. If we try that, then an error occurs because there is no method at the matching uh, f. So um, let's define a method for f. So f is, uh, for instance, print line. Um, I am a method of the function f. And now if we apply f, uh, it says I'm a method of f. And also here it tells us that there is now one uh, method associ associated with f. Let's define uh, another function for f. So for instance, f x comma y um, print line um, I am another function of f and x plus y is um, x plus y. And I should put an is here. So now uh, Julia is telling us that there are two functions uh, of f. And if I do f12, it says I am a function of f and x plus y is 3. Uh, now, Julia has many uh, nice and useful built-in functions. For instance, the sinus function, um, 1.5. Uh, and then uh, it, that calculates the sinus of 1.5 uh, uh, radiana, of cosinus of 1, or tangens of 0.5 or the absolute value of minus one, that's one of course, or the exponent of two. And uh, there are also um, more efficient methods, for instance, sin p of one, that uh, calculates uh, sin s of uh, p, only uh, in a numerical efficient way, because um, this is uh, the sin s of p is zero, and here it's uh, due to uh, um, rounding errors, uh, you get uh, something that's slightly uh, bigger than uh, zero. Now, other interesting methods are uh, methods sin, that uh, gives all the methods that are defined for the sinus function, or the type of, and then for instance, the type of one is an integer and type of, uh, um, a string is a string, of course. There are many nice uh, specialized packages. For instance, the linear algebra package. So if I use that, using linear algebra, then uh, we define a matrix, one, one, 0, 2. This is the matrix 1, 1, 0, 2. And if we, uh, we can calculate the eigenvalues, eigenvalues, eigenvalues of A, the, the function eigenvalues returns uh, a vector with the eigen, 
values of a that are 1 and 2 and I false a uh, I mean I I fax a returns the icon uh, factors of uh, returns the icon factors of a for instance uh, and then the first um, column is associated with the first icon value and the second column is associated with the second icon value of a well other Factors are the determinant of A and the trace of A, and are many more. You can find them uh, if you uh, search on the internet. Now let us uh, talk about how to define a method. A func yes, a method. The issues is to use the is syntax. For instance, uh, um, that is very useful for small functions. For, for instance, Pythagoras A B is uh, square root a squared plus b squared that calculates the uh, Pythagoras formula well if I do Pythagoras 3 4 that returns 5 You can also define, use the function keyword for more complex functions. For instance, here um, I define the function next collapse number, and this returns one if the argument is one. If it is an even number, it divides by two, and if it's an odd number, it returns uh, three times that number plus one. Now, why do I use uh, div n2 and not, uh, for instance, n divided by 2? Because if I do uh, 3 divided by 2, that's uh, returns, or 3, 4 divided by 2, that returns a floating point number, and I want an integer back. So, and if I do div 4, 2, then I get an uh, integer back. For instance, in... Uh, Julia, it is important that every time you return the same type. So here, this is an integer uh, in 64. Uh, here, I get an in 64 back, uh, 60, uh, 64 back, and here I get an in 64 back. So um, now let's um, remove this. Let's load this uh, function into uh, the, uh, the session. So if I do, uh, we first have to navigate to uh, the file. So now we are in the right directory and uh, I'm going to use the revise package so that we can use included um, function jl now it's loading the uh, file into a memory and now um, I'm going to use the using function tutorial So if I do next collapse number one, it returns one. If I, uh, uh, if I enter two, it uh, goes, well, it's not one, so it goes to uh, the else if. Now, is it even? Yes, two is an even number. So it divides by two and that's one. And for instance, next collapse number three, is 10 because it is not 1, it is not even, so it returns uh, 3 times n plus 1 is 3 times 3, is 9 plus 1 is uh, 10. Um, only um, for negative numbers, this doesn't really make sense because this is part of the Collatz algorithm and that's only defined for positive numbers, so I'm going to require that n is uh, positive 
and I do that with uh, I test whether n is positive and then I do um, uh, double arrow so this is uh, and then uh, if if it is uh, if this is not happened then uh, it will check this and then it will execute the error and uh, it says uh, n should be positive We are going to save this number, this uh, file. If I do it again, we get an error. So we get the error and should be positive. And uh, the double um, uh, bars here means uh, it's a short um, circuit uh, um, evaluation. So uh, if I do true and uh, print line, uh, I, for instance, then it does uh, nothing. It returns true because the, uh, this is basically um, uh, checking whether it's uh, this is true or that is true. But if this is true, then it does nothing uh, else. It, it just returns true. And otherwise, uh, if I do a false and print line high, then it's going to uh, execute the second line. And if I do uh, false and true, that returns uh, true. And false and false returns false. And um, yeah, so uh, now we have guaranteed that uh, n is positive. And if it does so, then if it is positive, then um, it's going to execute this. Now you can functions define functions for any type we want. Um, for instance, uh, if you do g x o, and then uh, for instance print line, hello, I am a method for bulls or I type. Uh, print line, hello, I am a method for everything. Now if we uh, type g uh, true, true is a boolean, then uh, it's going to execute this, uh, this function. So it's going to print, uh, hello, I'm a method for bulls. And if I do um, t of 1, then it's going to uh, use the other method because uh, it's not a bool, so it's going to uh, fall back to this method and print hello and a method for everything. Now, how does Julia decide between the two, uh, to which method to use? Well, it tries to use the most um, specific method. So, but you need a bit uh, careful. For instance, um, if we have um, the function h that uh, takes a real number and a floating point uh, 64, then uh, it's going to print uh, first method and return if x times y. Um, and the other way around, if it, the first argument is a float 64 and the second is only a real, then it's going to print uh, Hello, I'm a, uh, it's going to print second method and return x times y. So um, let's save this and um, h um, one f zero. So this is a float thirty two. So that's in particular a real, and the second is an uh, one point zero or two point zero to keep it a bit more interesting. So oh, let's make it two and three then it's going to return, uh, per, it's going to print first method because it's using this method because the first argument is not a float 64 but a, um, a float 32 <coughs> and float 32s uh, are reals but they are not float uh, 64s 
and it's going to uh, calculate x times y and return uh, that number. Now, if I do the all the way around, so I do here 1, 2.0 and 3f0, then the first argument is a float 64 and the second is a float 32. And then it's going to use the second method. But what if we use uh, 2.0 and 3.0? Won't it use the first method because uh, uh, 2 um, is a is an uh, floating point number, so a type of two is a floating point, and is that a, a real number? Yes, it is a real number, so it can use uh, this method, but um, so we are looking at this. Oh. Uh, it could also use uh, this method because uh, here uh, x is for sure a floating point number and uh, 3 is is uh, is for sure a real number, in particular a real number. It is of the type float64. And yeah, this one has, does it have to choose because uh, yeah, both are both methods are in, in some way equally close to this uh, situation. So let's see what happens. You get an error. It tells, tells us a uh, method error um, float um, blah 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 is ambiguous. There are two candidates. So we can use this method and this method. Now what does what do uh, does Julia do? It cannot decide which one to use because both are equally uh, appropriate. So uh, it throws an error and it leaves this decision for you to uh, resolve this problem. And um, so we have to implement an, a third method that can um, solve the third case. So uh, in case uh, both are float 64, it prints third method and returns x times y. So if we do it again, then it says third method and it returns a uh, six. So, okay, this is it for this lesson. In the less, next lesson, I will talk about keywords, arguments, and variable number of arguments. And uh, let's go to the exercise. Um, the exercise is here. Uh, we already uh, implemented the next collapse number function. Uh, the collapse uh, conjecture tells us that when we apply this function again and again, that after finite number of steps, one comes uh, to one. So, for instance, uh, if we start with uh, um, the three, well, three is an odd number, so it is multiplying with three and then adds one to it, then you get 10. So if we apply the, this function again, then uh, it's 10 is an uh, even number, so it will divide by two, and then we get five. Well, five is odd again, so it multiplies with three and adds one to it, so you get 16. 16 is even, so it divides by two, so we get eight. Then we divide by two again, we get four. We divide by uh, two again, we get two. And then we divide by two again and then we get one. Well, um, the Colette's uh, conjecture tells us that for all positive numbers, <coughs> this algorithm terminates. So eventually you will get uh, to one and then it stops. Um, yeah, this is a uh, conjecture, so it means it is not proven. One thinks that it. Uh, that this is true, but uh, no one uh, knows uh, whether it is true for really all positive numbers. It is, however, checked for really big numbers, so it is very likely that's true, but uh, you never know. So, um, the exercise is uh, implement a function, collapse, sequence, and integer, that takes an integer and uh, returns all numbers uh, obtained with algorithm one. So I already implemented it. So um, let's 
number of Colette sequence. Um, three for in one, for instance, we get a one and two, two, two and one because we started two and then one and then stops. Three, we get uh, this sequence back. And uh, well, let's calculate a really big number. Oh, that's a li little bit too big. Um, well, you see, it, now we get a really uh, large sequence, 187 elements. Well, I'm not going to tell you uh, how I implemented this. That is for you. So uh, try it out. And um, yeah, only if you um, do, uh, if you exercise with Julia, you, you will become uh, better with it. So um, good luck and uh, see you next time.